having the opportunity to being a part of these uh, of, of this virtual production uh, seminar has been uh, very very helpful I think uh, it's giving me some insights to the pros and the cons uh, but especially it's giving me some insights in how future productions will go I mean it's very simple to to sit behind a wheel in a car and, and make a road movie out the window. It's more complex when you begin to, to put in furnitures and how does the Unreal Engine work with the props and the lights. On this production, I work as the uh, Unreal Technician. I uh, work with setting up the scene, making sure that the tracking is running properly so that when we move the camera, we uh, get the correct um, movements also on the screen so that it relates directly. I learned from this production that uh, you have to, to work very much on the different layers that you put up in front of the screen. And uh, the, there's physical layer where the actors are, then there's uh, the props, and then you have the background, which is a 3D background, and then merging all these things together takes some preparation. It's, it's very different in the way that you think, and when we move the camera, we need to move all the lights as well. And if we change the position, then everything is changing. So it's like a big turntable almost. We get Hollywood saloon, we get a ho Hollywood lights. I mean, I would never be able to get that where I am in my career right now. So getting access to lights and sets in this matter, I'm super grateful for that and I think it's so precious. People think it's a hassle to do a virtual production or they don't know anything about it and it's difficult and it's probably, it's like most likely very expensive to do. Mm. Uh, so there are so many prejudices against it. Um, and once you tried it, it's like it's, a, it's another way of working, but it's not inaccessible at all. The interesting thing when you get a new media like this, or a new way of doing it, is how, how, how much can you twist it? Because it's, uh, of course you can make it look like it's real and that's also important, but it's also, what, what else can you do with this media? I've learned the most by working a lot with people from the industry. I feel like, to me, I, I learned so much from talking to people that are experts in their field because I come from a completely different place being a technician. So it's uh, a lot of fun to see how they think, how they work. And sometimes I find out that there are things that we are missing from the system that I hadn't thought of because I come from a completely different place that I'm working maybe with where something else is very important. And often it's from a more technical standpoint and less of an actual artistic expression kind of view. Before we can get the ball rolling um, on actually producing with virtual production, it's important to educate people about what it is and how much it costs and how much time it takes and new roles you're introducing on set because it is a, a different way of producing but also a different way of thinking mm. uh, about your uh, productions. Yeah, and once you do that and you start challenging people and saying we're going to do things in a different way, you also have to explain what are we getting out of this yes. because we're getting so much out of it. The scope of the stories we're able to tell is getting a lot bigger. Yeah. Uh, and it doesn't have to be a full virtual production, it could just be tiny details. When we, in the old days, talk uh, with the painters and carpenters, now we talk with uh, 3D designers and 3D operators. I think for, for virtual production to, to take more of a foothold in like film industry or, or television advertisement, I think we need to make it way more accessible and like easier to access and with better learning materials and workshops or yeah, free software or free courses, both online and in the real world. I think that's really important. So in order to make virtual production more accessible and more reliable and being used is to, is to do a, a lot more mistakes so we know what works. We need invitations like the ones we got here. We need to be invited in and we need to be um, uh, understanding to each other. We need to be kind to each other to understand that it's, it's new for all of us in some sort of way. 
In order to get virtual production to be part of more productions, we need to work with how we do virtual production, how do we create uh, systems that are not as uh, expensive as a lot of the systems that we have, uh, have now. Um, for a long time, it's been very much like cut down to only be possible for really big productions, but slowly we're getting more technology that makes it possible for us to do stuff even with uh, relatively small budgets. This was a good production. I've been happy. I learned a lot. I'm happy to have worked with everyone here and uh, I'm looking forward to the next one. This Visas has been really amazing. I think we have produced some amazing shots and I also think that the setup's just getting better and better and I'm really looking forward to being, being able to show off what we have next time because I'm sure it's going to be much more better. So I think my biggest mistake was that I thought I knew how it worked and it, I didn't and I'm really grateful for learning that. <laughs> <laughs> It's just been fantastic this time. It's getting better and better every time we've been through this. And this time it's just like, yeah, beyond what I expected and the more. It's really, really been a fantastic crew working so hard doing this. And the results are gonna be really, really nice to watch and also show off to other people that it's not that hard to do virtual production in Denmark.